Okay, good day class. So, we're going to discuss today the descriptive epidemiology. No? As we have discussed last week, when we talk about descriptive epidemiology, it is the study of the amount and distribution of disease within a population by a place, a person, tsaka yung time. No? Yung tatlong variable na yun. Okay? Now, for the learning objectives for this discussion, uh, number one, to discuss the utility of descriptive epidemiology. Second one is to discuss the variables used to describe the distribution of health-related events or states. Sino yung mga variables na yan? Tatanda nyo. Sa descriptive epidemiology, yung tatlong variables, we have person, place, and time. And then lastly, explain the relationship of epidemiologic variables with patterns in health and disease. Okay, so previously, we discussed natin yung difference between basic difference between descriptive epidemiology as well as the analytic epidemiology. We have mentioned that these were the two main branches of epidemiology no? or the epidemiologic approach. Okay? So what's the difference kasi? So, review lang natin when we talk about the difference nila. Pag sinabing descriptive epidemiology, yung tinutukoy natin dito is yung occurrence. Right? Yung occurrence and the distribution sa health-related uh, states. Right? Whereas kapag naman sinabing analytic, it answers yung mga determinants. So, basically, ang sinasagot niya is yung, yung why and how. Whereas, yung indescriptive, sinasagot niya yung when, where, uh, uh, ano pa kasi, where, when, and what, no? and who. No? Yan yung mga sinasagot niya. Okay? Again, a quick review ng description of the descriptive epidemiology. So, this is the study of the amount and distribution of health-related states or events within a population by a person, place, and time. And then, it also identifies non-random variations in the distribution of disease to enable an investigator to generate a testable hypothesis regarding etiology. If you remember dun sa ating last uh, discussion, the goal of descriptive epidemiology is to generate a new hypothesis. Okay. So if you look at investigative journalists no like Jessica Soho, um Corina Sanchez, Atom Aurelio, Howie Severino, if you look at them, they they try to be comprehensive on covering kung sino yung uh, kung what happened or who, who is involved, where that happened, when did this happen, and why did that particular story happen. Okay. Now to to compare in the epidemiology the ep epidemiologists strive for a similar comprehensiveness no in whenever we try to characterize an ep epidemiological event ano ba yung mga epidemiological event so pra probably mga example yan would be the pandemic no uh, mga rabies cases mental health so basically we're focusing on the health of the community okay so, yun yun. However, in the epidemiology, yung five W's natin ito. Ito yung papakita natin dyan, no? The five W's, okay, are synonyms to the following. Yung what, who, where, when, tapos meron dito yung why and how. What refers to the case definition or yung clinical approach, no? Yung case definition. Okay. Yung where naman, it refers to the place. When, refers to the time. Tapos yung who, syempre, it refers to the person. Now, yung why and how, since these are on a different branch of epidemiology, okay, analytic epidemiology to be exact, it refers to the causes yung mga risk factors, pwede din yung mga modes of transmission to answer yung mga 
uh, na-determine doon sa descriptive. Uh, kumbaga, they work hand in hand to answer a specific uh, question in your mind. Okay? Now, what are the objective of the descriptive epidemiology? Ano ba yung gusto niyang maatim? Ma- uh, maatim? No? In the, the f- in whenever you conduct this process. Number one, Siyempre, is to see what the data can or cannot reveal based on the variables available. Uh, the second one is to learn the extent and pattern of the cases being investigated. And lastly, to permit the evaluation of trends in health and disease and comparison among countries and subgroups within the countries. Okay, let's discuss it one by one. No? Yung number one dyan, since you have created an initial question, di ba? In epidemiologic approach, you always generate a new hypothesis. You So, you are asking a question. So, whenever you ask a question, you will have a data. And those data, uh, titignan mo if they could answer your question, no? Based on yung mga variables na available sa sa'yo. So, if they would answer your question or if they do not. Okay? So, regardless, masagot niya man or hindi, as long as it is related to your variables, it is significant in the study. Okay? The second one, the second one is you try to understand kung uh, gaano ba kalala yung nangyayari. The, to learn the extent and the pattern, if the pattern is increasing, or if the pattern is decreasing, no, yung tinatawag din nating trend. Okay? So, basically, that's it. And lastly, to permit the evaluation of trends. So, basically, you try to assess no, or evaluate yung nangyayaring uh, disease occurrence. Okay? And then, you could also compare it to the other countries. If nangyayari din sa kanila yon or if that particular problem is only localized. Okay? And another objective, sabi dito, number four, to provide important clues to the causes of the disease. And these clues can be turned into testable hypothesis. So basically, di ba nga ang goal natin? Goal descriptive epidemiology. Goal is to generate hypothesis. And if you generated a very good hypothesis, you know, a very nice hypothesis, which is very testable, you, you may now proceed to the analytical epidemiology. You test your, hypoth- you, your hypothesis. And then number five, to provide basis for planning, provision, and evaluation of health services. So, be, dito na papasok yung health intervention na tinatawag natin. Okay, now, now you're going to proceed to the main variables ng ating descriptive epidemiology. Remember the three main variables, we have the place, a uh, person, place, and time. So, dito na tayo sa first one, which is yung person. So, these, uh, these attributes, ang tawag natin sa each of those are attributes, no? So, all of these attributes are involved whenever we try to, to assess or evaluate a person in terms of epidemiology. So, ano ba yung mga attributes na yan? Meron tayong tatlo. Inherent. The second one is acquired. And then, the last one is circumstantial. Circumstantial. Okay. So, in, in- inherent, that means um, right after na you were born, or met automatic na as you are a, a single single individual, you're a person. No, meron ka agad yan. Okay, hindi pwedeng wala ka yan. So inherent means mga, ano ba yung mga attributes natin? Dyan? We have age, no? Since lahat tayo may age, sex, no? So lahat tayo meron. And lastly, we have the race or yung ethnicity. Okay? So, those are inherent attributes of a person. Second one, we have the acquired attributes. Acquired attributes, ibig sabihin, you have already, uh, you you got that particular attribute. 
it came from something else ibig sabihin, nakuha mo yung attribute na yun dahil sa isang significant na scenario okay? ano ba yung mga yan? first one, immunity immunity doesn't happen when if you are not exposed on a particular something, right? another, chronic diseases so chronic diseases, yung involved dyan, mga risk factors so ma-acquire mo yan literacy, literacy will only happen if education is present on a particular scenario and lastly, we have also civil status so civil status uh, right now uh, some of you are single yung iba, married diba? yung iba uh, uh, meron tayong mga uh, widowed no? yung mga divorced, annulled, etc so civil status and lastly uh, we have also circumstantial so that means it depends on a specific situation wherein that individual is currently in ano ba yung sitwasyon ng tao na yon right now okay so for example socioeconomic status no maaring right now uh, mahirap siya pero malay mo next year bigla siya maging mayaman so it is circumstantial so ano ba yung mga factors bakit siya mahirap ngayon di ba ano ba yung factors bakit bigla siya mayaman okay next yung occupation occupation again napapalitan yan so you might be working here in the academe right now. Pero malay mo, next month, you go back in your laboratory practice. Okay? Next is the leisure of activities. So, uh, kumbaga, yung hobby. Yung mga hobby mo. Or yung, uh, yung activities that you go on on your daily life. No? On a daily basis. The next one is use of medications. Do you use medications because you are sick or you just use medications to prevent something? Yung mga prophylaxis, vitamins, and etc. Okay? And you have also vices. So, mga bisyo. Yung smoking, uh, gambling, um, uh, use of illegal drugs. You know? So, those are considered as vices. Okay, now for the first, first attribute ng person is age age is considered as the most important determinant of health among person characteristic because of the per pervasive influence of age on the risk of for most diseases age should always be accounted for in any epidemiologic study so Technically, age is probably the single most important person. No, sabi nga dyan, uh, single most important person attribute. Bakit? Because almost every health-related event, no, almost, letting go, almost every health-related event varies with age. Okay, ibig sabihin, age-dependent lagi ang mga health related events okay with that said age should always be accounted for in any epidemiologic study so make sure na if you are going to proceed or conduct a, an epidemiologic study you take account na you always include age as your variable okay so, ano ba yung mga factors that vary with age? Okay. Please take note of all of this, no? Sulat ko. We have susceptibility. Okay. Susceptibility. You also have opportunity for exposure. Opportunity for exposure. You could also say yung tinatawag nating latency, latency or um to call it incubation. Incubation uh, of disease. Of disease. And and lastly yung physiologic response, physiologic uh, response. Okay, ulitin ko, since pangit yung sulat ko, 
no? um, these are the factors that vary with age okay we have susceptibility susceptibility is, since uh, tinutukoy dito is yung immune ng immune system ng isang uh, tao no we all know that yung mga smaller children yan yung ages 0 to 7 okay tsaka yung mga geriatric patients so yung mga older uh, persons no mas susceptible sila sa disease because their immune system is rather mababa pa as a child and then pagtanda ibig sabihin bumaba na dahil humihina na as age grows no next is yung opportunity for exposure kung gaano ba hazardous ba yung environment no hazardous ba yung yung workplace niya okay for ano for the for the exposure no kunwari uh, ang mga uh, working age okay yung 15 to 45 okay mas exposed sila sa environment okay latency or incubation of disease kung gaano ba katagal simula nung uh, you were infected of the of a particular disease up until the symptom shows no gaano katagal yung incubation and lastly yung physiologic response again yung immune response of your body okay, next next is sex so sex uh, we're talking about the mortality rates mortality rates are higher for males than females but morbidity rates are generally higher in females okay ibig sabihin mortality mortality deaths okay mas mataas yung mga namamatay na males kaysa sa females but morbidity morbidity means disease yung mga babaeng nagkakasakit mas mataas kaysa sa mga males okay please take note of that so the most striking aspect of analysis of disease rates by sex is the contrast between the mortality nga tsaka yung morbidity na males and females no? so dun yun siya mas ma-appreciate okay so the higher mortality in males mortality deaths you know, is not paralleled by a higher rates of illness so sometimes even though na mataas ang mortality rate ng males it does not reflect the morbidity kaya kasi nga mapapansin nyo dito the females has higher morbidity so sir paano yun saan namamatay yung ibang mga males so maaring through accidents not through diseases so pwedeng through accidents no kasi males are generally mas working on a hazardous uh, workplaces di ba pwede din sa mga uh, died ng earlier age no due to other circumstances no? mga mga environmental related events and etc okay so sex is uh, mga factors natin dito we have genetic hormonal anatomic or other inherent differences between sexes Occurrence of many diseases reflect differences in opportunity or levels of exposure. Women seek medical care more freely and perhaps an earlier stage of disease. So these are the added explanations as to why males have higher morbidity and mortality rates. So basically, uh, for the for some dif uh, for some di diseases, no, mga illness. The difference is due to their genetics, yung hormonal, yung anatomic, uh, visual, uh, anatomic uh, features, tapos yung iba pang differences. Okay? Tapos kung mapapansin nyo, dun sa, sab sa last bullet, no, sabi niya, women seek medical care more freely. So that's another reason as to why men have higher death rate so men sasabi na lang wala ay ipahinga na lang natin to okay. ay wala lang yan papahinga ko lang then bukas okay na ako diba whereas pag female uh, they seek medical care more you know, rather than the males okay 
another good example is the pattern of disease in what we call depression. Okay, the rates of depression is comparatively higher in females than male. Kasi nga, kung mapapansin nyo yung mga statistics right now, twice as higher and the rate of attempted suicide is also higher among females. Okay? But the actual completed suicides is more common among men. Ibig sabihin, yung attempt to uh, perform a suicidal act, mas madami sa female. Pero yung completed means namatay talaga is common among men. Okay? Another example. Another example ng sex, no? So, another example is this graph naman na it shows yung lung cancer rates in the US. Okay, as you can see, napaka-noticeable no? na mas mataas yung male kaysa sa female. Because na na check ng research na to no? na there is a higher prevalence so mas marami yung cases existing cases of smoking among men kaysa sa females in the past okay so na relate nila yon okay next person attribute we call it the race and ethnicity so race is the people or notion of the same stock mix them in Uh, if you're Filipino, tapos you're living in the Philippines, no? magulang mo, Filipino, kapatid mo, your brothers and sisters are Filipino, then you are a Filipino race. Okay? When we talk about naman ethnicity or ethnic group, marked by the recognition of a common cultural, linguistic, religious, and behavioral traits, as indicators of contrast to other groups. So, magiging siyang subset, a okay? subgroup of a race. No? Maaring Filipino ka. However, you're living in the Pampanga. So, you are more um, you are more enamored sa Kapampangan culture. Whereas, you are Filipino, and then you're living in the, the Visayas region. No? Mas uh, Visaya yung, yung culture. Okay? So, pwede rin na you're Filipino, pero yung subset natin dito would be your religion. ba? Diba? So, maaring your different religious beliefs. Okay? So, that's the main difference. So, uh, another thing, no? A difference in race or ethnicity may suggest difference in susceptibility or other factors that might influence the risk of Ibig sabihin, maaaring dahil sa, 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 sa ethnicity group A, no, mahilig silang kumain ng overcooked meals. No? So, okay sila. Whereas dun sa ethnicity B, mahilig sila sa mga uh, fresh, no? so fresh meats na hindi masyadong linuluto, undercooked. So, they are, most, they are more prone sa mga parasitic infections, no? So, sa mga ganun, kaya, si, si ethnicity group A, mahilig sila sa matatabang food, whereas yung ethnicity B, because hindi ganun ka-common yung mga fatty uh, products sa lugar nila, so, hindi sila prone sa mga, sa mga matatabang food. So, sino yung mas prone sa cardiovascular uh, infarctions no? or mga diseases? So, mas prone si ethnicity A. Okay? Next is the socioeconomic status or yung tinatawag din nating social class. So, quantifying the socioeconomic status of an individual is a little bit tricky. Bakit? Kasi, it includes a lot of variables. No? So, ano yung mga variables na yun? Nandito. Prestige, uh, wealth, and power. So, napakahirap i-measure ng mga yan. So, social class is a widely used concept for ranking or stratifying a total population into subgroups 
that differ from each other in terms of their prestige, wealth, and power. So, social class is a useful summarizing variable linking occupation, education, area of residence, income, and other facets of total lifestyle. Nonetheless, pag ang mga epidemiologists, they usually uh, utilize occupation, yeah, occupation, and i-underline natin, occupation, uh, family income, at saka educational attainment. So, yan yung madalas na ginagamit ng uh, ng mga epidemiologists uh, or health researchers to assess or evaluate the socioeconomic status of a particular individual. Pero, again, it is very tricky. No? It's very tricky. So, dito naman, for example, uh, frequency, socioeconomic status, frequency of many adverse health conditions increases with declining socioeconomic status. So, harmful exposures, lower resistance, and less access to healthcare. So, this is not always the case, no? But this actually happens more often than not. For example, ayan, TB. No? So, as you may already no nung sa CPH class nyo last uh, year. Tuberculosis is more common among people in lower strata. Ibig sabihin yung mas medyo may hirap. No? Mas common ang tuberculosis. Ano ba yung mga factors because of that? Yung access to healthcare. No? Yung lack of education regarding the uh, tuberculosis and uh, infection tsaka yung pagkalat ng, in, ng TB no? tsaka yung prevention regarding TB so napakarami din okay? so these patterns may reflect more no, dun sa harmful exposures yan yung mga nasa baba mga lower resistance, less access to healthcare okay Okay, so a very few adverse health conditions occur more often, frequently among people with higher socioeconomic status. Kung yung mga certain um, more common diseases, no, yung mga TB, etc., sa mga mas mahirap, meron din tayong tinatawag na mga uh, rich man's diseases. Number one dyan is yung tinatawag na gouty or arthritis. But this is not already, uh, this is already an obsolete uh, term no? since gout, gouty arthritis can be also uh, uh, poor people or yung mga nasa lower strata no they could also get gouty arthritis okay pero that eh, gouty arthritis is considered as the disease of kings since yung mga uh, kings back then they, they are the only ones who could afford or who could eat meat no? So, ayan. So, pwede rin na sabihin natin yung consumption of rich foods. No? Yung rich in uric acid. Diba? Okay. Uh, next is yung religion or yung the actual uh, religious practices of the, of an individual. For example, yung food intake. no Some religion does not eat uh, pork. Okay. Yung iba, hindi ko makain ng isda na walang kaliskes. So, yung crabs, yung shells, no? hindi nila kinakain yun. So, the others, um, alcohol use. Others do not uh, um, consume alcohol. No? Birth control, yan. It's a really taboo here in the Philippines because birth control is considered as um, tawag dito, pagpatay sa sa regular na 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 procreation, ba? So birth control, the use of birth control, uh, circumcision. So some religions does not uh, conduct circumcision, no? So, uh, ang kapag ginawa nila yon or pag hindi nila ginawa ang circumcision, that could lead to infection don sa penile area ng isang uh, male. And lastly, yung personal hygiene then, no? Sometimes um, there are religions that do not um, 
practice the proper hygiene. In fact, uh, meron talaga na they would just um, do their bathing sa isang particular holy place. No? Doon lang daw. So, yun. So, pwede din factors ng religion. Yan. The next one is mar- marital status. So, that traits. Yan, that traits. For over the past, uh, sabihin na natin, 100 years of years, no? marital status has been associated with the level of mortality for both cases, no? mga death rates. No? They have generally been found to vary from lowest to highest in the following order. So, sino ba yung uh, mas mataas na level of mortality? So, napapansin nyo, ayan, mga divorced, uh, widowed, single, then married. Uh, next one is some possible explanation bakit daw mas mataas yung sa mga divorced tsaka yung widowed ng mortality rates. So, possible explanations yung psychological and the physical support from the spouse. No? Since, wala na nga, wala na yung spouse nila yung partner nila, no? Maaring, they, they tend to lose their hope in life more kaysa dun sa mga um, nandyan pa or present pa yung partners nila. So, misclassification of marital status on records, no? Pwede ding errors on the records, okay? And the lastly, marital status may be related to health status through differences in sexual exposure, yung history, yung pregnancy, yung childbearing, and then yung also yung lactation of women. Okay? So, yun. Ayan, sa picture, no? So, kanina, we have mentioned yung pregnancy nga, at saka yung childbearing, no? Because they, are, they also entail as a special risk aside from any possible effects on subsequent development of uh, cancer, no? So, pregnant women are more subject to risk from what we call abortion. May it be pwedeng spontaneous, no? Or induced. No? Spontaneous, ibig sabihin, nangyari ng hindi mo kasalanan. Kapag induced naman, you conducted it no Cho- choice mo na i-abort yung child tapos syempre there will be what we call complications no complications from rupture of an ectopic pregnancy next we have the occupation so occupation occupationally related experiences can exert a positive or negative profound effect can help and contribute to larger differences in mortality and morbidity rates. Okay, so, pag sinabi ng occupation, it may be due to a variety of exposures in the physical environment or pwede rin due to a social or psychological climate. So, occupation. So, positive effects includes yung working in, a, in an op- occupation that demands physical exertion. So, yung trabaho mo, uh, nakakapag-exercise ka at the same time, that is a positive effect. So, you, you are protected sa coronary heart disease. Siyempre, kasi nakakapag-exercise ka, nakakapag-pawis-pawis ka. Diba? So, that is an example of a positive effect. Some negative effects naman of uh, occupation um, includes the following examples. Ayan, sa mga pictures natin. No? The first picture shows a miner. No? Nagmamine siya ng mga uh, minerals. No? So, studies show, sabi ng mga research, no? na workers in mining, uh, construction, pati na agriculture, they have higher rates of injury and death from trauma. Because napaka uh, high risk no, ng trabaho nila. So, it's considered as a negative effect. The next picture, ayan, is an asbestos worker. No? Although, a lot of uh, 
countries na in the world they ban asbestos no? bakit? because asbestos uh, contains tawag dito mga silicate mga maliit na silica silicate materials yung silicate materials na yan they are good for um, insulation kaya maganda siyang ninalagay sa mga sa bahay they prevent uh, fires no they are good whenever it is a cold weather o kaya a warm weather maganda sila however asbestos could induce uh, mga cancers mga neoplasms no so basically these workers since they are uh, and they are uh, asbestos workers no they are more susceptible sa mga cancers or neoplasms no? mga gastrointestinal cancer mesothelium cancer mga lung cancer o kasi nalalanghat nila they tend to inhale those little uh, silicate minerals no? the next is the family size so family size is associated with the social class uh, large families being common among the poor no mas madami po kung ma- if you watch mga atom um, eyewitness no maraming di- ano doon maraming documentaries regarding uh, the poor people in the Philippines tapos they tend to have a larger family than those that are in the middle class tsaka in the uh, higher class no so yun, large families being common among the poor so in a large family especially if they are poor children may be at disadvantage so bakit? syempre mahirap na nga maraming anak madaming papakainin diba? so paano mo mapapakainin mapapakain how are you going to feed a lot of your children no? dahil mahirap lang kayo no so napakahirap na that would be a factor okay since many persons have to share the family's limited resources so the disadvantages to children from large families includes uh, ayan higher rates of fetal neonatal and infant deaths no? higher childhood mortality and lastly, syempre, tendency to poorer intellectual performance. Kasi nga, bukod dun sa lack of food, no? They can, um, yung, yung access nila sa education, na uh, baba din, mahirap din. Okay. So, napakahirap. So, family size affects nutrition, income, tsaka yung crowding. So, next variable, so tapos na tayo dun sa person, the next variable is place. So, place, um, this is occurrence according to place. So, meron tayong tatlo, international comparison, with, within country comparison, tsaka localized disease occurrence. So, describing the, the occurrence of disease by place allows the insight into the geographic extent of a particular case yan, ito yung pinaka main point yan, geographic extent no? of a particular uh, case or problem and it's geographic variation okay variation so, how do we uh, expound regarding this one no <clears throat> Pag sinabing geographic extent, that means yung trend of that particular disease occurrence. No? Again, no, pag sinabing occurrence, mas tumaas no? yung, yung amount of that particular disease event kaysa dun sa kanya normal na dapat nangyayari lang. So, geographic extent, maaring endemic, mga epidemic or pandemic, gano'n, no? So, kung gano'n na kalala yung disease. Geographic variation naman, as you recall, sa biostatistics laboratory natin, when we talk about variations, 
that means kung how dispersed yung data no? kung gaano ba kung sino ba yung mas maraming infected individuals sa particular place no? kung sino ba yung mga individuals or yung kung kung yung place ba na to is more at risk na ma-infect dahil malapit lang sila doon sa infected na place you know? so geographic variation next please uh, first one is the international comparison so again pag sinabing international comparison napakadali lang no to ibig sabihin comparison of disease occurrence from one country to another ibig sabihin meron tayong boundaries each country di ba merong boundaries each country so you compare one country yung disease occurrence from a con uh, from a single country and compare mo yan sa another country okay so kunwari uh, ano ba yung covid cases ng USA as compared sa China Ganun. so you just compare them to each other na lang sya kasimple the next one naman is within country comparison within the country no? so localized na dun sa mismong uh, country mo we have natural boundaries versus political boundaries. Natural boundaries, that means yung um, they are divided by yung boundaries nila is yung mga uh, mountains, you know, yung mga rivers, an ocean, no? Nahati yung isang geographical place to another due to the natural uh, tawag dito natural due to nature no? ganun na lang due to nature yung mga mountains yung mga rivers etc so that is natural boundaries pag political boundaries naman that means kung hanggang saan lang yung nasasakop na territory of a particular place so ano yung difference ng mga to so pag natural boundaries that is more useful in understanding disease etiology understanding disease etiology again natural boundaries yan yung mga nahati yung mga geographical places ng mountains ng mga oceans ng mga rivers ng forests etc ng deserts no? etc so yan this is it is useful in understanding the disease etiology kung saan nang galing yung sakit okay pag political boundaries naman it is useful for collecting disease statistics okay so dito naman pag political boundaries okay it is more useful in collecting data statistics okay because the main reason there is meron na tayong mga government within the political boundaries. May kanya-kanyang government na mga yan. Uh, local government unit. So, they have the power to collect the data for you. So, it is um, since alam nila kung hanggang saan lang yung territory ng isang political uh, ng isang local government unit, hanggang dun lang sila. Okay? Next, we have also the urban versus rural. Urban, health of the people is affected by urbanization, uh, pollution, overcrowding, o kaya yung kanilang poverty. No? So, dito rin papasok yung socio-economic status. Pag naman rural, health of the people is affected by environmental, tsaka yung kanilang cultural, yung mga tradition, no? yung mga religion. Okay. So, yan. So, basically, this one, related siya dun sa person variable. Okay. Next. Now, uh, last naman is the localized disease occurrence. Dito na tinatawag yun yan, yung, dito na papasok yun yung tawag natin na endemicity. So, yung endemic, endemicity. This means a stable pattern of disease occurrence in a given geographical area or a population group at a relatively 
higher rates. So, kapag mas mataas na yung disease occurrence than the normal disease occurrence, no? Mas mataas na yung rate ng disease occurrence, okay? We can now uh, refer it as endemic. No? So, that happens only on a localized disease occurrence, on a particular place. Kung nare, um, sa Angela City, ang normal na HIV rate is only uh, 1%, no? 1% o kaya 1 per 100 persons. Pero pag tumaas yan, umangat yan ng 5% na uh, tumaas yan ng 5 per 100 uh, persons, ibig sabihin, nagkaroon na ng endemic of HIV. Okay? Kasi tumaas yung level mo. Or yung rate. Okay? And last variable is the time. So, the occurrence of disease changes over time. Alam naman natin yan. Uh, time is of the essence. So, ang disease, disease occurrence, meron din hangganan yan. Okay? Some disease occurrence changes, or, um, they occur regularly. Ibig sabihin, nangyayari sila on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a annually, ganun. Or, some can be unpredictable. Okay? For example, ang dengue, they usually happen right after nagkaroon ng tag-ulan. Diba? So, you can predict kailan, kailan sila nangyayari, the dengue. Whereas, in COVID, they occur unpredictable. Like right now, since COVID is still present no? so anytime anywhere nangyayari pa rin ang COVID so it is unpredictable so period during which an individual cases of the disease were exposed and the period during which the illness occurs that is your time variable so meron tayong tatlo again point epidemic cyclic fluctuation or the seasonal trend and lastly we have the secular trend. So, these are the three major kinds of change with time to uh, kung paano na, sin, paano na rin sila i-identify. So, the first one is the epidemic. Epidemic curve. Okay, wait lang. Or yung point epidemic. <clears throat> Ang epidemic, that means there is a marked increase in frequency of disease over a period of time. So, we can determine this using the epidemic curve when it, ang epidemic curve is a bar graph okay, tinuro na to sa biostat or a histogram yeah. it's a bar graph or a histogram kung saan the number of cases is plotted number of cases is plotted against time. Okay? What do you An epidemic curve, it is a bar graph or a histogram wherein chinacheck mo yung number of cases is plotted against time. Okay? Next, we have the secular trend. Secular trends, it refers to the changes in the frequency of disease over a long period of time. So, for example, years or decades, no? So, matagal. So, gradual changes in disease frequency helps in evaluating programs or make policy decisions or could be due to change in age distribution. So, ang um, sabi natin dito is you, when, whenever we graph the annual cases or rate of uh, disease over a period of uh, years no? or decades, it shows what we call a long-term or secular trends. No? So, ito yung nangyayari. Long-term or yung secular trends. So, ito yung nangyayari whenever we try to assess uh, disease occurrence or cases ng umaabot ng taon o kaya ng mga dekada. No? These diseases 
ano lang yan it, uh, it's either infectious man yan or non-infectious no? so i ilalagay natin yan dyan sa or i i-assess pa rin natin yan yung changes regarding that so kunwari ano ba yung mga non-infectious disease like diabetes mellitus check natin over time nat- napapansin natin that there are higher tumataas yung trends ng diabetes mellitus no? so maraming factors because of that one of the main factor is yung availability ng mga sugary products okay mas mapa- mas madali silang ma- ma-avail okay or accessible sila okay may it be increase or decrease ano ba yung example ng mga decreasing trends through the years so yung polio so back then yung polio is has a higher disease occurrence pero right now sobrang konti na lang to the point na eradicated na it's supposed to be eradicated but uh, a few years before no nagkaroon ng a few cases in Mindanao tsaka Visayas region ng polio okay And lastly, sa time, we have the cyclic. Diba? So, it refers to the current alterna- alterations in the frequency of disease. Can be annual or seasonal or the basis of periodicity. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga factors that could affect the seasonal patterns of disease? Number one is your environment. Okay? So, weather variations. So, right now, nagkakaroon tayo ng global warming so basically it's a factor doon sa mga disease occurrence no so certain diseases na mas na-prefer nila yung wet season o kaya yung dry season no or yung warmer no so lumilitaw sila nagkakaroon ng disease occurrence next is yung agents of disease yung mga vectors no insect vectors so again temperature and humidity they play an important role no dun sa life cycle ng mga ano na to mga insecto no so um, third one host factors so maaring recreation or occupational activities no differences in people's activity uh, bathing or fishing na 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 po provide na sila uh, na po provide to ng exposure sa mga uh, sabihin natin leptospirosis no? na naliligo sila or nangingisda sila sa baha diba? so leptospirosis and water okay? and number 4 is yung social, sociological determinants no? holidays so may mga holidays na maaring maging factor sa pagtaas ng disease occurrence no? yung mga maganda example doon Mm, yan, pag New Year diba? So, every New Year Nagpapaputok So, mas nataas yung occurrence Ng mga um, fireworks related injuries no? So, that is still considered as an occurrence Okay And I think this is the last Yeah, and that's it So, if you have any questions Just The handout will be posted sa this Friday, so just wait for it. Tapos, post na lang namin. Okay? Now, you can now proceed or you can take a break o kaya you can all now proceed dun sa next topic natin, which is the descriptive um, studies, no? Descriptive study designs. Okay? Thank you and God bless.